You are listening to Comedy Club for Kids Presents. Radio Nonsense, Radio Nonsense, Radio Nonsense, Radio Nonsense, Radio Nonsense. Who let the poos out? Great opening question from George and Isabel there. Um, it certainly wasn't me. My poos are contained very safely in a small box in my home. Was it either of you two? Do either of you two let the poos out? Only at the weekend. Only at the weekend, Helen. Have you done it? It depends on when the bin man is coming. Sometimes right. I, I, I put the bins out too early and then the poos are outside waiting for him for weeks. You put your poos in the bin? Yeah, who doesn't? Yeah, I'm yeah not, I mean, who I'm doesn't, Matt? Who's, course, where do you put yours? That's weird. Under I mean, your pillow? I was just checking that that's what we all did. Right. Well, I mean, already we found culprits of two of the people who have let the poos out, mm. uh, albeit at different times. Maybe it's a combined effort. Anyway, um, you know, George Nisbell, I hope that's already an answer for you. Um, or did you do it, George Nisbell? Who knows? Who knows who did it? Did you let the poos out? Hello and welcome to Radio Nonsense, the official comedy club for kids podcast and the only silly comedy podcast that is suitable for any ages from six to 99 years of youth. Notice the ages that I haven't said yet. Yes, that's right. No 100 year olds yet again. What are you doing? It's not for you. Oh, but my birthday. Birthday cake has so many candles, it's like a bonfire. If only I was strong enough to blow them out. Oh no, my house is on fire. No one cares. Go away. Apologies to all of you that are 99 and under. Um, welcome to episode five. I'm Tian and Duya, which is an anagram of a B-Day reunion, which I don't know what that would be. Uh, a B-Day reuniting with other B-Days that it knew when they were being built, being reunited with the first bum it washed. No one will ever know. Um, and joining me today are our two superb specimens of funny. Um, in the blue corner, it is comedian, actor and user of a protractor, Matt Green. Hello. Yeah, every day. Every day, and you, I was going to ask if you used a protractor today. I just love angles. I love knowing what angles are. So, you know. And what's your favourite angle? Probably one seventy. That's a good, that's a good angle. It's nearly flat, but it's just got a little bit of little bit of edge to it. A little but, bit of lean though, as well. Yeah. Like it depends on which way you're going. I guess you could kind of lean. A bit I mean, of lean. I, if I don't think I could lean at one hundred and seventy degrees, that would, would be you wouldn't find it comfortable. No, you'd be basically on your nose, wouldn't you? Maybe that's what it is. It's but what also if, yeah. it feels like the angle that makes a protractor worth using because Absolutely. it would be hard to judge by eye and you can't go beyond 180 sure Unless what, what happens if you go beyond protractors. 180 well you just fall, over, fall off the world don't you that's terrifying or you have to move your protractor well also to, well I mean you say that I think I'm quite pleased that Matt's here to stop us falling off the world true how many people have you stopped falling off the world today oh just one on the way here she, she was looking a bit you know wobbly and I just made sure the protractor was like no you can't go any further than that if you go any further than that you're off. That's well, you're very admirable. Thank, Thank you for being here. Um, and Matt, uh, obviously, this is an audio podcast. Yep. Uh, it is all the sounds. Do you have a favorite noise that you could do for the listeners? All right, here it comes. Oh, my goodness. That wow. was wonderful. That was with his lips. He didn't just open up a bottle of fizzy Coke. I know, Are you sure? Because I wasn't, I, I mean, he could have done that under the table or like behind him. Or I, I don't know, with all these incredible leans and angles, they could have been. It came out of his face. That's incredible. And what, what is that the noise of, Matt? What were you? Um, I think it's the bubble scale. The bubble scale? Yeah, because it's not just like, it's like. And what do you, and again, are you using that to measure the bubbles once you've measured the angle at which the bubbles it's are It's just at? obviously any, any scale. It's the scale you use for bubble music. So you can make a, you can make a tune out of bubbles, obviously. But um, sure, I sure. prefer just using, just using it for scale, just so I can kind of... It just know. doesn't stop measuring things, does no, it? No, I just what's, love what's measuring he like? things. It just won't stop I measuring things. Bubbles, angles, what next? Weasels, who knows? <laughs> um, and I just wanted to ask, we, obviously I've got some facts uh, about both of you. And, and for yep. you, Matt, I've... I've heard this. This might not be true, mm-hmm. so feel free to tell me if it's just fake news. But is it true that you have seen a melon? Who, who told you that? It's just it's just going round on the grapevine. It's just in the. Uh... I mean, I've I have I have seen a melon, but I didn't know that anyone saw me seeing it. So it's just a bit weird. Like I've only seen one when I've been on my own. Sure. So who's been watching me watching? Melons. It wasn't I don't know. Me. It wasn't. I it wasn't you. I definitely. It didn't. wasn't you, Helen. I, I you didn't spot no, him watching a melon. I wouldn't. I may have. I. It was me. Why have you been watching me watching melons? Why have you been watching melons while I've been watching you? I watch them on my own in the comfort of my own home, and what I look at. If I look at melons, why is that? Weird? I feel like you're getting at me. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. It's just. It was just. It was in the news. I like I fruit. That's to... what I'm saying. I like big fruit. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, look. Um. 
that's Matt over there. And in the red corner, uh, really? the other voice that you have been hearing, it's champion food impersonator, Helen Duff. Hello. Hello. How I are am. you? I've been impersonating food all weekend, in fact. Have you? Yes. I um, came up with a few new ones. My classic standards are prawn tempura, sushi roll and cheesecake, as you know, Tiernan. Mm. But uh, this weekend, I attempted a mango lassi and a jam donut. Oh my goodness, and how did that go? It went well, except that uh, I was doing a Latitude Festival and they were selling almond milk mango lassies for vegans. And for my money, that wasn't a mango lassie, that was more of a mango lasso because it Whoa. tasted like a milky marzipan. That's tricky. That's tricky. And how do you convey that uh, in the form of, sort of performance art? I just did a lot of actions with my fingers and toes. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I can imagine that worked very well. Is he a professional? We have two professionals at the table, one who can measure everything and uh, spot a variety of fruit, one who can um, impersonate a variety of fruit. Um, and Helen, much like Matt as well, do you have a favourite noise that you'd like to share with us today? I do. It's... My goodness, that was uh, that went on for a while. That was impressive. And and what is that? What is that? The sound of that's mulch. That's the sound of mulch. I love any kind of mulch. I'm thinking porridge as it's cooking and you're stirring all the ingredients together. A bit of a pear, some oats, a bit of milk, maybe a chia seed if you're lucky, kids. <laughs> uh, also compost heap when you're stamping it down with your feet if you're lucky enough to have one in the garden. I like the sound of different things coming together and growing into a new thing. But can I just check, because you did that for a very specific amount of time, is that how long mulch always sounds like mulch for? It depends. That sound that I did, that would then just repeat on a cycle repeatedly. Sure. Mulching forever. Mulching forever. Wow. This is, I mean, this. Is, I feel like I'm learning so much already today. Um, and Helen, look, uh, again, I don't want to, you know, start rumours. I don't want to make this an awkward environment. It's already kind of become that uh, with, with the melon comments earlier. But um, I heard that you are best pals with the toilet duck, like the original famous one. Is that true? And what is, what are they like? Um, it's absolutely true. Unlike Matt, I'm not going to be doing any kind of denials that will quickly be shattered <laughs> on the podcast. I am, uh, I wouldn't say best friend. We haven't spoken for a while, but at one time we were very tight um, because he's just such a busy, energetic character, uh, full of vim and vigour. And uh, uh, depending on the season, lemon, peony, or rat flavour. Rat flavour? Yeah, rat flavour is very specific. He only whacks that one out if he's doing a sewer. Sure, sure. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, and I, I, a lot of toilets to get around too. I'm, I guess mm. that's why you haven't seen him in a while. Oh, well, exactly. He's. I mean, we really got to know each other when I was young. He was just starting out. But people, as always, and ducks, the same, they find their thing, they drill down into it, and it's very hard to track them down after sure. they gone down the pipes. Um, good. Well, uh, obviously, uh, we have to make definitely absolutely sure this show is safe for everyone listening of all ages, except 100-year-olds. So go listen to whatever your favourite music is. I don't know, a factory or a horse farting or something, and go away. Um, sorry, what I mean is what I need to do is check exactly what rude words will not be said on today's show. So, Helen, what rude word will you not be saying on today's show? Giggle flaps. Giggle flaps. That is pretty rude. Also, babble flumps. Babble flumps. Is That's, that not just the same thing in a different language, I thought? Uh, well, yes. And as a result, I need to just cover off all the synonyms. Fair enough. Yeah. Giggle flaps and babble flumps. Yeah. That is, well, um, we, I'm, I'm quite shocked uh, at even the thought of those words. They're I'm very bit, pleased you won't be saying them. I like the fact that the second one is slightly marshmallowy. Hmm. Yeah, but you like that, but I still suggest you don't say it because this show has got to be... Which, of clean. It's got to be clean. You're Sorry, right, which, not, one, which one's marshmallow in? Babble flumps. Right, I thought so, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the one she definitely won't. She's, Giggle flaps is not so marshmallow -y. That's yeah. more of a, a crisp. It's almost like that's a marshmallow that's been toasted. Yes, for a schmoor. Mm. Mm. But let's have less of them. Thank you. Um, and Matt, what about you? What uh, rude word will you not be saying today? Well, I definitely will never be saying flobber dobber. <gasps> Good, please don't, because uh, we've had complaints about that before, actually. Yeah. I mean, flobber dobber is just one of those words that 
it just every time you say it, you feel a bit. Bleh. It bit, makes my whole throat tense. Huh? Yeah, yeah, a bit sick. yeah, yeah. It's disgusting. Well, thank you both for not saying that. And of course, this week I'll try my very, very best not to say toothbrush, but for lemons, uh, which is apparently the worst thing you can say to someone in Italy. So if you are from Italy and listening, I promise I won't say toothbrush, but for lemons, even once during this podcast. <laughs> Um, now, look, it goes without saying, but I do have to say it, otherwise you wouldn't know what I was going to say without saying it. Anyway, look, there you go. You two are the guests on the show, but also you, the listeners, are the guests on this show. I mean, I'm not going to mention all your names, it will take ages, but you who listen to the show are also part of it because you send in suggestions of topics for us to discuss, questions that need answering, and any ideas for opening or closing lines and self-written jokes that you'd like us to read out. And if you wish to do any of that, you can do that by emailing any of those to podcast at comedyclubforkids.co.uk. The first subject this week comes from Ed, age seven, and Cameron, aged five, and I guess... This is more of a statement than a question mm-hmm. or a topic. So, Matt, Helen, I hope you're feeling ready for this. Yeah. But, um, done Ed, my stretches. You've done your stretches, mm-hmm. have you? Good, good, good. And Matt, you're doing some warm ups there. Right. Mm-hmm. So, this, this is what they sent in Ed and Cameron. Holidays. Everyone should have more holidays. Agree or disagree? I strongly agree. I strongly disagree. Let's do this. Okay, I strongly agree because holidays used to be, when I was younger, the only time I saw my dad because he lived in another country from me. He lived in Australia. Whoa. And so if I didn't have any holidays, then I never would have seen him because I had to go to school the rest of the time. So would you have liked even more holidays than the holidays you already had? Yeah, definitely, because I thought that Australia was a magical place where everybody lived on the beach and was tanned and drank strawberry milkshakes all the time. And is that true? Not at all. When I went there as an adult, I realised that actually they sometimes stay inside and don't get any colour on their skin. They work very hard, often never go to the beach and tend to have peanut butter milkshakes. Oh. Yeah. I didn't see that coming. So as a kid, I I just saw it as a, a, a place that really was not. And I would rather it was the place I thought it was than the place it really is. And if I continued always going there for holidays and not for working there, then I never would have had to find that out. Well, there you go. I feel like I mean, this is that's quite mind blowing stuff. Matt, you you disagree? Well, this is my point: is that holidays are great in small quantities. Like when you have a week away, great, you enjoy yourself. Every time I have a holiday, by the end of the week, I'm beginning to think, oh, I kind of want to be home now. I feel like I want to be doing something more fun than just you know drinking milkshakes and being on the beach, and you know, just want to be back in the real world. And if you just had holidays all the time, they wouldn't feel special. And then going to work would be a holiday, and that'd be a nightmare. But then, wouldn't you be able to go to more places to measure more angles? That's true. I mean, I've been to Pisa. I've done the main angle. I've done oh, the sure, leaning sure. Tower of Pisa what was angle. It? Uh, I can't reveal that. Um, okay. It's, uh, it's because if you found out what the angle was, then you could put another tower next to it and make it look like a rude word. So, you know. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, no fair. It would be more, like out, a flop that's fine. Um, sure. So, yeah, I, I, I just think, you know, if, I think holidays are great, but like have like one holiday a year, maybe two or three days, boom, you're in, out. Then the rest of the year, you can be looking forward to that holiday. And then it's really amazing rather than just having like, you know, like a whole, if you had a whole year of holidays, it wouldn't be a holiday. But at what point does it stop being a holiday? Like say if you, if everyone had so many holidays all the time that they weren't having any non-a-days, I I think that's the opposite. That is the, that is the. It's a holiday and a non-a-day. Non-a-days obviously also for Italian grandmothers as well. Well, yes, absolutely. Nonas. Absolutely. So non a day, which is also, I mean, it gets very confusing mm. in Italy because all those mor- grandmas can't have holidays it's as a, no- a result. There's of- a Morris dancing term as well, isn't it? Nonny, nonny days. That's the other one. Oh, is it? And yeah. is that why all those grandmas have to Morris dance and can't yeah. go on holiday yeah. and they're it's- just generally exhausted? Yeah, yeah. yeah. all the time. Mm. That's awful. Well, well, apart from Morris dancing grandmas on nonny days, if everyone is holidaying all the time, like what if we were, if we were holidaying right now, we wouldn't be doing this. No. Right? Is this not a holiday? This is work. Oh, maybe this oh, is a holiday. so that's where I got confused. Right. I thought this was a no. break from my normal day-to-day life. If you still want to pay I'm... me the flight fees, though, and the villa money, then that's fine. But, uh, oh, that explains why nobody else is in a bikini. No, yeah. I mean, that's it. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, a I'm, I'm dressed in a full Awkward suit as well, so yeah. Yeah. It I am a, a bit, bit chilly, actually. If we could turn the air conditioning down, that would be great. It's it's what you paid for. Right. So, yeah. And, I mean, the, the other question is, obviously, what, what Ed and Cameron haven't specified is that they've sort of said holidays, and we've already assumed that we mean the opposite of a non day when we're no longer working and we get to go and... Uh, if you're a fish, be on a mantelpiece. If you're someone else, be in Portugal. I think those are the only options, mm. as we've discussed. Um, but there are, of course, other holidays, which are national holidays or or days off. Christmas is a holiday. Yeah. Um, there are quite a few different holidays all around the world. One that I've recently found out about, which I think you'll like, I found out about a few interesting holidays that happen um, 
which I hadn't heard about before. Uh, one is the Lop Buri Monkey Buffet, which is the last day of November in Thailand, and they leave out a massive feast for monkeys, and everyone has a national day off while monkeys just eat a lot of fruit. Um, does that sound good to you? Are Would there you any like melons that? in that? Do they have there melons? are some melons, yeah. Right, I'd, I'd be well up for that. If sure. I was impersonating a fruit at that time, would they eat me? Quite possibly, I yeah. think they might. I, I find that prospect exciting. Sure. Yeah, although I've seen monkeys. I went to a monkey uh, park recently. Did they nibble you? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, they, they gave us peanuts to give to the monkeys, and they, these were tiny little squirrel monkeys. And they, I mean, if I hadn't had peanuts, they'd have eaten my face, I think. Well, I, I've been to a monkey park uh, in Japan, and the uh, strange thing was that we had to go inside a room with, like, a caged windows, and the monkeys were on the outside, and we fed them peanuts through the cage. But essentially, it's like the monkeys were at a zoo, and we were in the zoo. Well, that's what it was. I mean, yeah, that's what the Jap- Japanese think of monkeys as being, you know, visitors to the zoo. So, that's what so I paid money to be in a zoo. Yeah. <laughs> that's very strange. Did you it? have to keep your eyes closed so they didn't eat them? No, 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 I had enough peanuts. They were fine. Because your eyes look a bit like peanuts. Well, thank you. That's the nicest thing I've ever said to you. <laughs> I'm glad you like the compliment. That's you fine. guys are too nice to each other. <laughs> it's so lovely. It's so lovely that you're both here today. Um, another festival uh, or another holiday uh, is La Bifana, which is in Italy. And instead of Christmas, um, they uh, it happens on January the 5th, they leave out broccoli and spiced sausage and a glass of wine for an ugly old witch called Bifana uh, to come to their house and then leave them treats. I don't know what type of treats an ugly old witch would leave you. But uh, that sounds. Would you like the sound of that? Leaving out a bit of broccoli and spiced sausage. Have they cooked the broccoli or is it raw? I don't know. Actually, I couldn't find that anyway. That changes things because if you overcook broccoli, it smells like farts and fills the whole house with that kind of fug. And spiced sausage can do the same if you eat it. Oh really? But what a combination! So is that the kind of treat the ugly old witch might be leaving? They should with? just leave you with a fart. Yeah. I mean, it might be, but that might be what they want. I mean, I don't know. It could be, you know, come to our house, fart around the house. I don't know what the house smelt of before. I suppose, yeah, you you don't need those um, candles then, do you? You know, aromatic candles. You know. um, I, I just throw a few more of these out. You we've got um, the one that I really like is uh, La Tomatina, which is uh, in Brunel uh, or Brunol in Spain. I've pronounced that very wrong. <laughs> there you go. And um, thirty thousand people throw tomatoes at each other for ninety minutes. Um, I think that sounds like so much. Fun. Yeah, me too. I would absolutely. I love. I'm a big fan of tomatoes. Also, there's a mulch sound coming with that, isn't there? Of course. When you get hit by a tomato, it's going to go. That is very. I, the my only concern with it is, and uh, forgive me, if this is a bit sort of horrible. But if you were injured, tomato is very much like the same color as blood, and, mm. and you sort of going, please help, and they'd be like, oh, you're just covered in tomatoes. Also, tomato is quite salty, so if you got a bit of that in your in your wounds, it'd be no, quite. Yeah, how would how would you know who was injured and who was tomatoed? Mm. And also, what happens to the tomatoes afterwards? They have to eat them. Maybe they, they have to. Yeah, I just have this image of them then all having to lick it all off each other. No, I think they get monkeys no, in. That's don't they, where too? the bolognese sauce comes from. Right. That's you know sure. Dolmio. Yeah. That instant pasta sauce you can buy and it put into a bake. They just gather it up off the street and smash it down like a compost heap. They all right. stand on it and then they squeeze it into jars. Right. Of course. That makes okay. sense. Of course. Um, and this this is my favourite festival I, I found out about recently, and I think you might enjoy this. It's a national holiday um, in Bolivia. It's called the Tinku Festival, or translated, the Punch Your Neighbour Festival. <laughs> and uh, they believe that blood must be shed to get a good harvest. And so every May, they all get together in the town square and hit each other. I mean, that's amazing. It is amazing. I don't know if I'd want to take part in it, although I don't know. I definitely want to watch it. I would like to watch it. That should be televised. Why is that not on TV? That should be on like live. That would get bigger ratings. And I'd like to just say to the to to everyone listening that I do I don't encourage violence or it's all punching your neighbour. But if it's for a national holiday and you're celebrating it, scared by that because I think to shed blood from a punch you have to hit pretty hard. I've been punched in the past, but I don't think I've ever shed blood from it. And also, you've then got to get it in a shed, and I don't know how you how would you'd have that's a lot of blood. I wonder if you could just do a more fun version, like anybody who's tripped over in the last week could come along and open up their scabs because they're quite fun to pick, aren't they? Oh, you can have a scab opening festival. Scab opening festival. I think that would be nice. I mean, yeah. maybe it's uh, that does sound a little bit like it was invented by vampires. Oh, do you know what I mean? Oh my goodness, I hadn't even thought of that. You yeah. think this is all like a sounds like it's me plan just like, so that vampires? Ooh, I wonder can... who's got the blood. Oh, he's got some nice blood. Yum, 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 yum. You know, mm. wait, wait I, we should warn them. This is horrific. Are they as a country or a place? Do they have abundant harvest as a result? I uh, again, I don't know. My my knowledge on Bolivia is 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 slim to none. It'd be a real uh, shame if sure they were barren where it and is, they yeah. were still just punching each other until they gave blood. They just need well, to punch harder, right? Yeah, and maybe also make sure it gets into the soil. Mm. Yeah, and then in a shed. Um, Do they so, grow beetroot? 
Uh, I don't know. Because that would obviously, beetroots themselves are made of blood, aren't they? Are they? Is that, is that why they're that colour? Yeah, when you cut them open, that's why they stay in chalk, chalk, chalk chopping boards. Sure, and it, it's, that's the same as like, because couscous is made from little bits of people's teeth, isn't it? True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And nuts are made from nuts. Yes, I heard that. And quinoa is just dried snot, isn't it? That's yes, it. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, enjoy your lunch, uh, listeners. I'm sure that helps. Perfect. I mean, I, I, hopefully, uh, Ed and Cameron, um, that has uh, answered your question or discussed your topic enough. And I think that we can all agree that everyone should have more holidays or not more holidays uh, or maybe some holidays and definitely don't punch your neighbour. <laughs> Um, our second question today, though, uh, we've got loads of important questions today, uh, so we can move on. Our second question, um, this has been sent in from Ruby, aged seven. Um, and this is a, a fascinating question. Ruby has asked, why did Vauxhall stop making Merivers? Um, Ruby, I should add, believes it's because of Donald Trump. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not a car person. And by that, I mean, I, I'm human i'm not a transformer mm-hmm. um i don't know much i don't know much about it I've, I've never even seen a meriva before probably no. not in the wild i am um, um, I, I have to say I, I did look this up oh and, did you uh there is a reason i mean mm. it's, a bit, it's, it's a boring reason but it's a reason uh which is that they were all haunted all of them mm. every single one yeah what were they haunted by cheese che- what the ghosts of dead cheese Different cheeses yeah yeah I had the same. Mm. Uh, also, that the reason, I mean, obviously, a, a car being haunted by cheese in and of itself isn't necessarily a Doesn't reason. necessarily, you wouldn't necessarily even know. It could be kind cheese, but I think yeah. they were really neggy cheeses. They were bad cheeses, yeah. They say things like, you're a terrible driver, yeah. whilst no. you're on the road. And like, the I, smell- I, I'll melt all over you, you idiot. Kind of stuff. And this, and there was this sort of blue stinky cheeses that during the night time would fog up your windscreen so you couldn't see out the front. Mm. Right, right. And, and is it, has anyone discovered how these got in? Because, I mean, I don't know how many... I'm assuming there were more than five of these cars made, oh, possibly I mean, even thousands, ten. I think. I think Thou- right, that many yeah. thousands. It was crumbs. Crum- crumbs yeah, of cheese? too many crumbs had been left in the original batch of Merivers. Mm. And then as a consequence, that just bred, a bit like, you know, kombucha and yogurt, how it can reproduce itself. Right. Uh, so it was in the fabric of the car and then mm. at, in the factories. You know how they just copy and paste a new car? And it, it creates the next one. Yeah, um, and they tried to they the tried to cover it up for a long time. There. They just said it wasn't you know the people were imagining it that it was just you know people were just uh, drunk maybe. But that was kind of worse because they were accusing their customers of being. Uh, eventually, they had to admit it. I mean, there must have been some people that like this though, because I I like cheese. I can imagine well, myself quite being quite happy with some ghost cheese. Whoever whoever sent in the question, what was the name of the person? Uh, Ruby, age seven. Ruby obviously loved you know haunted cheeses. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if Ruby drove one herself. Uh, I don't know if she was a Mar- a Mariva drive a Mariva Mariva. Maybe she, maybe she has Mariva. parents who drive them. It's actually pronounced Mariva. That's how you Mer- say it. Ruva. Yeah. Oh, named after the famous Mer Ruva. Yeah. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, who, oh, who was the mayor of that town where all the haunted cheese scared everyone exactly, away? Yeah. Well, exactly, yeah. It's sure. A, a, a long legend we're looking at. I hadn't realised that, and I think now that you've pronounced it correctly for me, that comes into, because I, I think I remember the story is that it was quite a happy town, wasn't it? But there was mm. a famous cheese maker there, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, we don't know what happened, but one night... Well, they drove him out of business, they and drove then he, of came business. Out, he came back the following day and said, you know, I'm going to come back with some haunted cheeses. And they were like, yeah, yeah, we don't like cheese. And then he just planted haunted cheese uh, all around the village. Yeah, and I, I sort of, you'd have people walking through the town going, have you just farted? No, it's the haunted cheese. Yeah. And then that would just plague them for days to come. And then the yeah. haunted cheese would whisper, it wasn't me that farted, it was Mary. Yeah. And then they'd all blame Mary. And yeah. Mary was continuously blamed. Yeah, yeah. And a- actually, in many ways, I think uh, Vauxhall decided, yes, obviously, to name the cars after M- Mayor River the mayor but also to do justice to mary mm. that's nice had mm. been so plagued that's by really nice because isn't it true uh and again i'm not so up on my history with this and i apologize to listeners i should have studied more um but because mary was dunked in cheese wasn't she yeah she uh I think sort of a fondue punishment a very yeah special, yeah, that's a, yeah. Uh, she she got into a very special few cars that had sunroofs mm. Mm. so if you had a car with a, a mary var with a sunroof then Mary was in your, the, the cheese that she was haunting was in mm. your car. And whenever you opened the roof, she'd say things like, Oh, windy today, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Dunk, dunk your bread in me. Dunk your bread in me. Gooey, gooey I am. 
Wow, yeah. wow. And she was... Uh, what I, she had I, different I, accents. I was going to say, on... so it depends on where you were in the yeah, yeah. country. Yeah. She would adapt yeah. for you. She could be Spanish. She could be Welsh. Yeah. Probably just those two. Yeah, yeah. It, that's, yeah. That is very impressive. And um, uh, I, all, I, all I know about the, the Mariva was it had a front engine and a front wheel drive, which I, I don't know. I guess it just went around in circles. Mm-hmm. Um, and it had five door, five passenger. So one passenger per door and yeah. no driver, I assume. The Probably. reason you have a... You had to drive from the boot. That was the thing. Right, got it. And okay. the engine was in the front, obviously, because you were in the back driving, so it didn't have space in the back for the engine as well. But also so that when you opened up the front of the car, the engine sort of... <laughs> opened like a kind of mouth. Yeah. Sure. And then was it full of cheese when you opened it up? Gooey. Gooey, yeah. Did it run on cheese? As well? You know, did it run on petrol or did it run on... It was. There were different else? models. There was the um, liquid petroleum gas model. That was very popular. It was quite hybrid as well. Most of it was a hybrid petrol cheese. You could, you know, depending on what time of day it was, sometimes it was running on cheese, sometimes it was running on petrol. I'm on... surprised she w- is sad that it's been discontinued, actually, yeah. because one of the, the reasons it was so difficult to operate was because you couldn't obviously just go to any old petrol station to yeah. fill it up. You had to go to a Gouda factory. Yeah. Sure, sure. I, and and is, is also, I mean, I wonder if there's other issues at stake here, because obviously veganism is becoming more popular. Mm. Yeah. Are they now releasing a new model that maybe runs on coconut cheese? You know, like, or, or cheese, or some of those fake cheeses, or you know, a dairy Soy alternative. Milk, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, nuts maybe. Could Possibly be running nuts, on nuts. Yeah. Um, you know, nuts or or just vegan cheese. No one knows what that's made of. Could be just petroleum. I mean, we've already got. There's quite a lot of uh, tomatoes going uh, mm. from La Tomatina. Surely they could run it on some of the excess from that. Dormio. Yeah. And then obviously the haunted voices would be quite different. Let's go for a little drive. I like what I like here though is it's, so whatever a car is run on it, is it haunted like is this something that I, we should all know about is a car haunted regardless of what it's like built on or well if you think about it petrol is um it's is, fossils, is isn't fossils. It? so actually all cars are haunted by dinosaurs oh my is that why my car goes Rrr! absolutely yeah 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 Rrr, 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 rrr. that's a T-Rex oh my goodness oh, really cuz yeah. I thought that might have been a fossilized dog could be, could be. Depends on uh, depends on the size of the dog. Mm. That's very true, doesn't it? And that's why some cars jerk a little bit when you first get going, mm. because like dogs, they're so excited by the idea of a walk. Mm. It's kind of pulling at the sure. leash. Well, also, I think that we all forget that in prehistoric time, dogs were massive. Mm. Uh, the sizes of they were the size of T Rexes. Yeah, weren't they? Mm. and dinosaurs were tiny. So and it's... dinosaurs were really very small. So yeah. it's just that we always look thing. at them in close up in mm. pictures. Yes, yes, and a lot of people forget that. So um, good. Well, well, thank you. This has been uh, absolutely. Oh, I mean, uh, really, Ruby. I hope that you've uh, you, you come away from that feeling full of knowledge. Um, there are things there that I don't think I'd ever have found out from the internet. Um, so uh, luckily, we you know got a room full of expert car experts. So that one was pretty easy. I mean, so if you throw us questions like that. We're going to get them done, aren't we? Because everyone knows everything about uh, Mary Mayor Rivas. Mary Rivas. So uh, Ruby, I hope that you are satisfied and good luck driving whatever. Uh, car you get next that feeds on whatever haunted uh, food substance uh, that uh, it's been haunted by I suppose Um, it's right Um, good Uh, it's now the time of the show where we read the amazing jokes what you've written Uh, Comedy Club for Kids isn't just podcasts but also we do shows all over the country and abroad and we run workshops teaching people of your age how to do stand-up comedy not 100 year olds though stop it but if you fancy giving stand-up a try you can find out where we do uh, those workshops near you at comedyclubforkids.co.uk and you can also ask a human older than you preferably of adult type age to get you a copy of our How to Be an Unstoppable Comedy Genius book from our website for just seven of their earth cash uh, for this show though if you've got any of your own gags which you've definitely written yourself and not heard from a relative or read written on the side of a passing sheep and you would like myself and the guests to read them out please send them in as well as any suggestions for topics questions or opening and closing lines and i'll send you a copy of our book for free um we have got two absolutely brilliantly funny jokes uh today uh, sent in by bethany and rufus uh so I, I will ask our lovely guests to read them out to us this one's from bethany aged seven why couldn't the bird fly 
I don't know. Why couldn't the bird fly? Because it was actually a fridge. <laughs> Very good. Very fair. Didn't Very see that good. coming. Excellent work, Bethany. That mm. was brilliant. That was brilliant. So many big problems as well. Lots of fridges that look like So many questions as well. So many. It just creates so many, uh, you know. It's beautiful. Makes Absolutely. a lot of sense of the bird that's been living in my kitchen for a long time. Mm. Well, there you go. It's actually a fridge. There you go. Yeah, and that shop I went to the other day just had loads of big, like, sort of white birds. It's really weird. Wow. Yeah. Um, okay, and uh, we've got another joke. Uh, this one's from, uh, who's this one from? This one's from Rufus, age six. What's the coolest vehicle? I don't know. What is the coolest vehicle? A bicycle. Oh, I see what you've done there. And what I love about that joke is that you could have gone for a bicycle, but he went, no, 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 that's that's like an icicle is cold. Mm. He wants the coolest vehicle. Yeah, it's very specifically yeah. cool. It's not cold. Ah, master of wordplay. Well done, Rufus. Well done. I can imagine it with a big hamper of ice creams on the back. Yes. You know, pulling along a trailer, just chucking them out to people who look like they are in need of some sort of... I see salvation. And then as it hits people, it melts on their face and they go, ah, you've blinded me. There we go. Rufus, you see what you've started. There's mm. not just a joke, but an innovation. Um, well, thank you so much uh, to Bethany and Rufus for those. Uh, we have all weed a little bit from giggling so much. Uh, those are absolutely brilliant. If you have any jokes that you've definitely made up all by yourself and you want to be read out on this show so that we all get the giggles, then please send them to podcast at comedyclubforkids.co.uk with your parent or carer's permission. Please. <laughs> Um, right, and now it's time for the very final question of today's show. Um, and again, there's a lot of history going on in today's show and a lot of kind of uh, expert knowledge. I think we're going to need to use that again uh, because Toby and Sam, aged six, uh, both of them, are. they've asked, when, when did football start? I think it started with Medusa. You know, the Gorgon. Mm. who they had to kill because when she looked people in the eye, they turned to stone. She had snakes for hair. She was in ancient Greece time. And uh, when they cut off, her head, cut off her head in an effort to stop her turning people to stone all the time because nobody could get anything done. There were so many statues that used to be their mum and dad. Mm. Uh, they kicked her head away and it propelled at such a speed that it immediately um, became exciting and somebody else kicked it and somebody else kicked it and somebody else kicked it and it was quite heavy because her head in, in fact itself had turned to stone when it was chopped off. I mean, kicking her head made of stone would really hurt your feet, though, wouldn't it? Like, yeah, that's why they had to innovate and make a football out of rubber. Right, And right. the first, first games of football were very short. Yeah. They were just like two minutes and then... It was just one kick and then yeah. somebody returned the kick and then it was over. And they were all quite badly injured, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. In fact, the way that they measured how successful the game had been was who had broken toes. Yeah, yeah. So the, the person with the most broken toes was the absolute winner of the game. Which yeah. is why when people talk about fouls, actually that's wrong. Fouls are the, the earliest form of football. That I mean, football right. was originally all fouls. It was just... You mean chickens? No, fouls as in hitting, like kicking people. That mm. was Right, that chickens was, were kicking people. Yeah, chickens were kicking people. Originally, you would have a team of chickens versus a team of humans... And it would be about who could kick the most chickens or the chickens could kick the most people. And then eventually right. that got too confusing. So they just made it two teams of humans. Sure. Kicking a chicken. Yeah. Kicking a chicken. And then it, that was too cruel. So sure. They like, yeah, it a human definitely. head. And then that was too cruel. And eventually after, I mean, they tried lots of different things. Sure. Uh, and eventually got down to a ball. What were some of those things that they, because there, there must've been quite an evolution. I assume somewhere in there probably was a round haunted cheese. Melons. Melons. Mm. Yeah. Um, um, armadillo yeah. rolled up. Yeah. Like, yeah. But um, then every time they kicked the armadillo, it opened and yeah. all its spines would be stuck in your foot. Like mm. sea urchins. They tried sea urchins for a bit. They kept picking things that uh, uh, on the face of it were odd choices, seeing mm. it as they were so injurious. Mm. They tried a whale once. That was that was a disaster. Um, they could, I mean, they kicked it. A lot of people kicked it. It just didn't move. That's really sad. And every time yeah. you kicked it, obviously it just shot a big um, spurt of water in your face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which made it very difficult to see what direction you were trying to get. But that's what footballers are actually these days. You know, when footballers, whenever they, whenever there's a like a shot of a footballer in, during a match, they always spit. It always happens. That's them actually paying tribute to that whale. Yeah, and that's lovely. And when they put yeah. their hands yeah. up to cover their eyes, it's because in the olden days, often you were being blinded by whale spurt. Mm. Wow, wow. I mean, mm. this is fascinating. So football, football's origins come sort of somewhere from Greek myths into the kind of uh, chicken and poultry world, mm. into the whale world. And, I mean, I assume that there's been some quite incredible matches 
throughout history because of this. Yeah, well, there is, there are, there are still, they, there are still villages in the UK that play this game called like the village game, where they all have to try and kick a ball from one side of the village to the other side of the village. Um, and it's only recently they've, they've started using actually a ball rather than a different kind of, you know, living creature. Well, so they on, made it part of um, like a harvest. You know, when we were talking earlier about people punching each other to mm. create a good harvest, often that was, it was the the game, mm. the football game for the village was linked to um, getting a good harvest. So they'd put quite a lot of different foods into a sack. Mm. Right. And that would be what they'd kick along, mm. hoping that it would kind of s- explode out into the earth. Well, sure, but I'm guessing more often not, it just made porridge. Uh, uh, generally, yes. Sure. Sure. So they'd kick they'd kick a sack of porridge from one end of the village to the other end of the village. Mm. And whoever won won the porridge. That was it. And that was that was the and end. And they were sort of warm for the rest of the day. Yeah. I mean I went to Mexico a couple of years ago and they had this thing called um yeah, thank you. Just a Hang on, was it a non a day or a holiday? It was a holiday. It was okay. a holiday. Uh, for how long? But I suppose in a way it became a non a day because I noticed something that was funny. So I that because I'm a comedian, I so it became You're sorry, you're what? I'm sorry, I should have I did I not give you my card earlier? No, I, no, you you gave me a parking ticket. That's my card. Oh, is that your card? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I also but... work as a parking attendant. Sorry, right? It's sure. confusing. It's confusing. Um, but I went to the Mexico, and there's they have this um, ball. Uh, they have this ball Wait, hang game. On, hang on. Do old... I have to pay the parking fine now? Just leave it till later. It's fine. We'll okay, because it, it it just really concerned me. I, I didn't know if I was put it in the bin or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You put it in the bin. That's how you pay it. Okay. Okay, sure. All right, no, sorry. You carry on. Back Mexico, yeah. Sorry. I'm quite confused now as well. Um, uh, I went to the, they have this ball game where they had these huge um, uh, sort of ancient uh, ball courts, and the idea was you had to get a ball into a uh, like a basket, almost like a basketball, uh, like a hoop thing. But the only way you were allowed to um, move the ball was by using your uh, like hips and elbows or something and they had these and it, apparently games used to take hours and hours and hours because they were impossible to, it was basically impossible to make to make it happen and i think presumably after they played that for several hundred years they thought should we just kick it it's a lot easier isn't it stand up lots of people yeah. got bad backs yeah, i mean yeah. I, do you think that sometimes because it, the way you describe that using arms and hips like i, I would kick something if i got frustrated with it yeah. it's probably pointing the way they no i'm too angry with this yeah. boff and then went oh that really works that's actually a lot easier because if you think about it Trying to hip something into a into a thing that's above your head. That's quite hard, isn't it? It's is really it? that's for snakes, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That's a snakes game. Yes. Yes. But snakes are allowed games. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's just a human need to know yeah. when it's a human game and a snake game. The difference is clear. Such well, um I hopefully uh, for Toby and Sam, uh, that has answered your question as to when football dis we did actually put a date on it. Anyone who got a specific date? Monday. Cool, that'll do. And uh, there you go, uh, Toby and Sam. It was Monday. And to everyone who sent in jokes and suggestions this week, that's Ed Cameron, Ruby, Bethany, Rufus and Riley. Comedy Club for Kids does shows all over the UK and abroad with very many funny acts, including Matt and Helen. Uh, We are at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival throughout August at the Assembly Roxy at 5.35 with different acts every single day. Plus loads more shows all over the place from September onwards. Uh, Do check out comedyclubforkids.co.uk to see when and where we're near you. And please don't forget to tell everyone you know about this podcast, except for 100-year-olds who must stop listening listening right now right this very second yeah you've already heard most of the show no you're not allowed to listen to any more no not even this end bit you've heard a hundred years of stuff already greed years stop it sorry i mean uh, do please ask your nearest tall humanoid to help you like subscribe and maybe even review this podcast and send in all your topics questions opening and closing lines and self-written jokes to podcast at comedy club for kids uh, comedy club for kids presents radio nonsense we'll be back next week but first a final thought from riley aged eight Spuckle. Bye. You have been listening to Comedy Club for Kids Presents. Comedy Club for Kids Presents Radio Nonsense was recorded at the ACAST Studios in London. The guests were Matt Green and Helen Duff. Music by Radio Paddy Gervers, designed by Cal Prendergast, Radio and hosting and writing by me, Radio Nonsense! Radio Nonsense! Radio Nonsense! It's the end. Well done, guys. We got through all of that, <laughs> and you didn't say... <sighs> Any of your rude words. I managed to not say toothbrush, but for lemons. So, <laughs> pretty. I, I mean, bubble flump, bubble flump, bubble flump. I, I mean, I, it was literally at the front of my mind the whole time to say flubberdobs, but I never got that. You flub, just didn't do it. Flubber you dobber, didn't flubber do dobber, it. Flubber, I have to say it now, just get it out. Toothbrush, but for lemons. Toothbrush, but for lemons. This isn't going out, though, this bit, is it? Oh, no. <laughs>